space considered extreme. These are a couple of reasons why. Because there is no air. <gasps> Stars are constantly exploding. Boom! The temperatures are extremely hot or cold. There are no resources, for example, no food, water, or air like I mentioned earlier. It's very expensive to get there. It's super big and easy to get lost. There is no gravity. Hey, what happened to gravity? Here are some cool facts about space. There's acid gases and radiation of various sorts. Despite our scientific knowledge, there is still a lot of controversy about space. Galileo was the first to use a telescope for studying the sky. A lot of scientists have devoted their entire lives to studying space. Space is also a good environment for movies, TVs, comic books, and mu music. It's virtually impossible to live for any amount of time in space without aid, as far as we know. However, scientists continue to search for signs of life of any sort. Did you know Earth has a magnetic shield that extends into space, creating a bubble-like cocoon around our planet? It acts as a shield from particles and radiation streaming from the sun. These particles interact with the atmosphere, causing the northern and southern lights. Whirlpools are like black holes. They will pull anything that comes too close in. And once it has been sucked into a black hole or a whirlpool, it will almost never be seen again. Environments on other planets can be barren and desolate. Mercury. Mercury is 400 to 180 degrees Celsius. Mercury has no atmosphere, which means there is virtually no weather. Mars. Mars is 120 to 25 degrees Celsius. Mars is home to many massive volcanoes. It is also home to Olympus Mons, the largest volcano in our solar system. We've sent rovers to Mars before. This is the Sojourner. It's designed to go on hostile planets. Saturn. Saturn's rings are made up of ice crystals, some as big as houses and others as small as specks of dust. Storms can race around at 800 miles per hour. On Saturn, you can find giant ice crystals. On Earth, this is the best we can do. Neptune. Neptune suffers the most violent storm Okay, take a thousand. Neptune suffers the most violent weather in our solar system. Storms on Neptune have been spotted swirling 10 times faster than they have been on Earth. Venus. Venus is the hottest planet at around 500 degrees Celsius. Venus is like a twin to Earth. Venus and Earth are nearly the same size but are very different. Venus's clouds are made up of sulfuric acid. So if you went to Venus, you would simultaneously be burned crushed, and roasted to death. You would also most likely be suffocated too, because the atmosphere is nearly all carbon dioxide. Sounds joyful, doesn't it? Jupiter. Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system. It is so huge that 1,300 Earths could fit inside it. Surrounding the core of Jupiter is an ocean of liquid hydrogen about 1,000 kilometers deep. Did you know that the space probe Galileo photographed an asteroid heading for Jupiter that was 35 miles long? Much bigger than this little meteorite that landed in ass that landed in South Africa that's only 13 kilograms. Uranus. <laughs> Uranus. Uranus lies on its side, which is probably due to a collision in its early formation. And I need one more fact about Uranus. I've got an itch on mine right now. <laughs> when we search for life on other worlds, we look for signs of water, organic elements, and volcanic, volcanic activity. Robot explorers have discovered clues to life on some of the moons in our solar system. This Apollo 17 lunar sample is one of only four touchable moon rocks in the world. Have you seen my car? How has technology helped us to explore space? It has helped us in many different ways by creating spacesuits, rockets, satellites, free dried food, radio, transmitters, a bunch of things to help us go there. They've also made training facilities so it's possible to get trained and fit to go up there. 
One of the contributions from Canadians to the space program was the Canada Arm. It's used to grab broken satellites and sometimes people too if they're floating away. Are there alien life forms on other planets? I'm not sure. Personally, I haven't seen any. Today we're here with Aaron Green, who works at the Space Center. Hello, Aaron. Hello there. Is it okay if I ask you a couple questions? Of course. My first question is, what is that? Oh, well, let me show you. This came to us from the International Space Station, the ISS. Help me open it up. Pull it this way. It's very heavy. There we go. Perfect. So here we have a space toilet. And um, space toilets don't use water. They use a vacuum. So if you were to just flick the switch here, hear the vacuum. So it's a vacuum instead of water. You have these leg claps that would keep you in place so you wouldn't fall away or float away. And if you had to go number one, you'd have this tube here with the cup. Every astronaut gets their own cup. Some are oval for ladies, the others are round. And then all that liquid waste would be filtered and used as drinking water. <laughs> yeah, and then we also Sounds have... fun. <laughs> what would happen if a person went into space? Oh geez, well if a person went into space without a space suit, there would be no air pressure around them in the vacuum of space. So the air in their lungs would try would start to expand and their lungs would get bigger because there's no air pressure to hold that air in. So their lungs would get bigger and then any of the air that's in their blood would try to escape through their skin. So you'd have blood maybe coming out of your skin and your lungs would be getting bigger. It would not be a pretty sight. Now you wouldn't explode but your lungs might burst and you probably wouldn't last for more than a few minutes. If one of my classmates or I were to go into space, what temperatures would there be? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you would probably experience many different temperatures, but they'd be extreme. So you would have a very, very, very hot temperature or a very cold temperature. Say you were in space working on the space station in your spacesuit, and the sun was hitting one side of you, but the other side was shaded. This side of you in the sun would be hundreds of degrees above zero, so your blood would be boiling. But on this side of your body in the shade, it'd be hundreds of degrees below zero, so it'd be freezing. And that's why the spacesuits have little tubes of water running through them so that that keeps their body regulated, the temperature is regular all over. Your suit is really a mini spacecraft. 